Yo, what's good guys? This is Nightwing2303 from moretesters.com and it is that time of year again. That's right, not Christmas, but it's that time of year where I give you my top picks of 2016. Let's go. So each year I like to switch things up just a little bit. I still give you my top overall picks and things like that. This is from performance perspective only. These are also my personal opinions and what worked best for me. So you might have a different list. If you do have a different list, I urge you to share it respectfully down below in the comment section. If you disagree with my list, that's okay. I don't give it because it's my personal picks. Now, like I said, I'm going to do things a little bit differently as I do each year. I like to switch things up. So I've got categories. The first category is the most surprising shoes of the year. So these are just the shoes that I wasn't expecting much from and I was just kind of pleasantly surprised with their overall performance. My shoes that you can't go wrong with but they are not quite in my top picks. The They're fun to play in but I probably wouldn't choose them if there's a very important game coming. And then there are my overall top favorites or top performance picks of the year. So with that being said let's go ahead and uh get right into it. So these two picks are the fun to play in, but I would not choose to play in them if there's an important game coming based off of one particular attribute of each model, and that is the traction. The traction on both pairs is just a little bit inconsistent, and when you're playing in a game that really matters, traction is one of those things that you really want to make sure that you have, because slipping at a crucial moment within the game kind of sucks. So those two shoes are the Air Jordan 31 and the Nike Hyper Shift. The Hyper Shift was actually a surprising shoe, was almost on that part of the list, but I really loved the materials on them and I loved the fit. However, the traction sometimes was amazing and then sometimes it wasn't. It was really good, especially if you were in motion, but as soon as you close those little like nubs or teeth or whatever, then you did get a little bit of slippage and that was right when you were stopping. And then as you guys know from the Air Jordan 31 performance review is that everything on that shoe was awesome with the exception of the traction the traction was just like man you guys were so close but you kind of dropped the ball on that one because the traction you guys have done perfectly before and so that's where i get a little bit disappointed where it's like yo if you've done perfect traction like the air jordan 28 pretty good traction with the air jordan 29 the air jordan 30 i just didn't like and then the air jordan 31 was better than that but still not as good as those other two you know what I mean? It's kind of like, dude, you were so close. So close. But those two shoes, they're really fun to play in. Personally, I really enjoyed my time while testing them. So if you do end up with a pair, or if you already are playing in a pair, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed. Now, the picks that I have for surprises of the year, there are three, and it's the Anta KT2. That's probably the biggest surprise. The D-Lillard 2 from Adidas, and then the Nike Mentality 2 because of the fact that they were so close to the original, but they improved on things such as the material and the traction. So that was a surprise because because they looked identical to the original mentality, but for whatever reason, they upped the ante just enough to where I was like, oh, that was that was a nice, pleasant surprise, especially for their retail price. The D-Liller 2 is a surprise because of the fact that the D-Liller 1 was not a shoe that I really enjoyed playing in. There was a lot of sloppiness within the fit, especially in the heel. Whatever they did with the D-Liller 2 though, whether it be the bounce, the jacquard upper, the different last, the external heel counter, all that stuff. And they gave you everything that is on that shoe for like 105 bucks, which was probably the biggest surprise for me because at that time we were seeing shoes with the same materials and tech specs for 150 plus. So just based off of the fact that the D Lillard 1 wasn't the best shoe and then the D Lillard 2 completely obliterated that, they are definitely on that surprise of the year list. Now the, the first one that I'll give it to is Anta because I don't expect much of anything from them, which is probably why I'm really surprised with the shoe overall. But like the D Lillard line, the KT1 and the KT2, the cushion difference between the two is crazy. So like the small things that they've done to, you know, kind of like make up for the, I'd say lackluster first model. The second model really made up for it, which was really surprising. Traction was great, cushion was great, fit is excellent. If you like that snug, narrow fit, if you want more fit recommendations on that shoe, all you gotta do is hit that performance review. And uh, yeah, so for a shoe like that to just kind of be like, mm, okay, they were all right. And then the second version come out and be like, damn, these are actually really, really nice. Surprise. So these are the shoes that you cannot go wrong with whatsoever, and that is the Nike KD9 and the Hyperdunk 2016. The Hyperdunk model is usually one of the best kind of like overall or all around shoes, you know, great for positions one through five nearly every year. Last year, they dropped the ball with it. This year, they picked it back up and they were like, yo, sorry about that. We're gonna fix things and do it right this time. So whether you're not, you want the high version, the low version, the elite or fly knit, whatever you wanna call it, all of them had really great attributes, both the traction, the cushion, especially, especially compared to last year 
And then they have different material options and height options for those of you that want it. So if you want a low, they got you. If you want a mid, they got you. If you don't want any of those, but you want the newest, most modern materials they got, they got you with the fly knit. Now, as far as the KD9, I really wanted to put that in my top picks list, but the reason why it's not is because of the inconsistencies with the durability of that zoom unit. Personally, I did not have any issues, but we have other testers on weartesters.com. And out of everybody that tested them, two of us out of, I think it's like six people, two of us had popped air units. And that's, that's too small of a margin to where I can be like, okay, like, you know, maybe the issue is very small and minor and it's only happening like one out of like 25 people. But when it happens twice out of six people, that's not the best, you know, ratio. So it is on my list for, you know, it's a solid shoe, great tra traction, great cushion, wonderful materials, all that kind of good stuff. But you might end up with a popped air unit. I'm not saying that it's, you know, a common occurrence. I'm just saying that it's something that is like the 28s, the Air Jordan 28s. It was like more probable than anything. And that's kind of where we're at with this one. So hopefully next year, if they use the tech again, which I hope that they do, it's modified in a way to where it's more durable. Now, one last shoe in this category, and that is the brand black rare metal. It's a great shoe for a hundred bucks or 110 bucks, something like that. Great cushion, great materials. I find that their traction is awesome. I played on them with many different courts, which is what I normally do with all of my shoes. I play on about four to five different courts. So, you know, some of them are kept really clean. Some of them are not. <laughs> so thanks 24. Although there is one 24 that has like a really nicely kept floor. So shout out to you. But uh, that's what I normally do. Two different high school gyms and all that stuff. So I really take them for a spin, all the shoes that I test and I put them on every floor possible with multiple different conditions. And more often than not, the shoe held its grip, except for the ones that had an abundant amount of dust. But that's the court where like no shoe really does well in that type of situation. So those are the shoes that you really can't go wrong with this year, all of which are pretty moderately priced, I will say, with the exception of the Flyknit Hyperdunk. But that's more of a personal thing. I personally think that you can get like a great shoe with the regular Hyperdunks as is. But if you are really picky, you just for whatever reason you want Flyknit, you know, you're going to have to spend some to get some. Although they are at outlets now, so that's always a plus. Patience saves pockets. All right. So this, this is the big one. These are my top picks for the year and they are in no particular order. And in case most of you guys have not guessed already because they haven't been on any of the other uh, little categories or subcategories, it's pretty much Adidas's entire freaking line. Adidas basketball has always been a hit or miss. Sometimes they really hit it out of the park. Sometimes they miss the ball completely for whatever reason from December last year all the way till right now, December of this year, they really and killed it. The D Lillard 2 came out last year and it was amazing. Then followed that up with the D Rose 6 Prime Knit for the All Star Weekend. That was around February. And that was such a nice upgrade to the regular version that it, like, I was like, yo, I don't even want the regular D Rose 6. The Prime Knit one is where it's at. And that is still one of my favorite shoes of all time, by the way. Got them right here. They are pretty beat up, but it's because I put a lot of love in them. And then you had their top trio of the year. They're like brand new models, which was the Crazy Light 2016, the D Rose 7, and then the Crazy Explosion all of which fantastic models. Out of the three, I'd personally pick the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The D Rose 7 Prime Knit or Crazy Explosive Prime Knit, both of which offer a little bit different cushion setups. The D Rose 7 and the Crazy Lights, they offer a very firm boost midsole, but they have a really great amount of impact protection. And then if you really wanted that plush feel, you go with the Crazy Explosives. Those things are just amazing. And then you had another surprise hit with the Harden Volume 1. Those end up being my go-to shoe currently because the rubber on those is so firm that they normally grip to courts that have pretty crappy surfaces. Those also have the least amount of boost in them. They have the thinnest slab of midsole boost. So you're getting a ton of court feel with some good impact protection, but you're not getting the amount of boost that you would on any of the previous models I just uh, kind of like talked about. The only model on this list that does not feature boost is the D Lillard 2. And even though those are bounce, it is a wonderful setup. So don't cut them short. There are two different versions. There's the boost version, which features last year's crazy light tooling. I would not go with that. I would go with the regular bounce setup. They do have prime net options on that, like kind of like tooling available now. And that is the best one in my opinion. If you want any information on any of these models, all you got to do is check out their performance reviews. I got a performance review on every single shoe on this list. And I really hope that you enjoyed my top picks. So, you know, if you agree, if you disagree, if you have a different lists, what are your favorite shoes this year that you'd like to play in? I want to hear from you. So let me know down below in the comment section. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way for me. Helps my channel out quite a bit. So if you support me, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. Can't wait till next year. See what all these brands got for us next time. And until then, have a good one.
What's going on guys? It's Jaren from WearTesters.com and Under Armour has just locked in a deal that will make them the exclusive uniform provider for Major League Baseball. The deal won't take effect until the year 2020, but this is still a major step for the brand as it marks the first time they will hold... So as I was saying earlier, this is the first time that this shoe has come back in original shape since its original release and from what I can remember of the 2000-2001